Hi, in this video I will show you how to use the activity preview in Frog. So I click on this pane and here I see a list of all the different activity types that are installed in Frog. These are all plugins and so um, new ones are being added frequently. Now some of these activity types are uh, very general and can be used for many things such as chat, other ones are very specialized. Um, we are planning to provide a bit better sorting of these, but for now don't be surprised if you see something like a, a melting chocolate simulation uh, right next to a PDF tool. So we can uh, scroll up and down, we can search here. So if I want a list, then I see here that Brainstorm um, has a list. And now I can click on that. I can also see a bit more explanation. And what we see here now is, first of all, the configuration for the Brainstorm tool and how the actual tool would look like for students. So a lot of the Frog tools are very configurable and they can look very different depending on the configuration and on the data. So for example, the Brainstorm tool started out with something that would take uh, a simple idea and uh, would let students uh, vote it up or down. And eventually we said, well, we can add any kind of item. So for example, here uh, we have these learning item types. So right now it's set to idea, but we could also just set it to a rich text. And you'll see now that it just reloaded uh, with the new configuration automatically. So I can now edit some rich text and format it and uh, uh, now another thing we can do because all of the frog activity types support live collaboration and we want to see what that looks like so we have a few tiny icons up here and if we l move the mouse over it it'll tell us that this adds a user so this basically just adds another virtual user for us to preview this activity so let me add let's say four users now, in Frog, we have this uh, concept of social planes. And a, I, an activity can either be on an individual plane, a group plane, or a whole class plane. To change which plane this activity is on, we click on this button, Change Plane. Currently, the students are in a group because that's often what is most useful for preview and automatically the two first students are in group one Maurice and Chen Li and we see here Edgar and Noel are in group two so that means that um, for example we can add a new idea here and we see how these two because they're in the same group see the same information so when I vote here I see that it's moving um, it supports synchronous editing and so on. So I can see how people are interacting with different um, components collaboratively. I could also switch to now it says all. This means that it's in the whole class. So now if I add an item all four students will see it. Or to individual and now only a single student can see it. Okay, so let me take away those three other students. And in addition to playing with number of students and playing with the config, we have some pre-configured examples here. These examples bundle config settings and content, preloaded content. So here, for example, is a list that has some items, but the students cannot add new items. So these items might be coming from a previous activity or from an operator. Uh, here's the same list, but here it's configured so that students can add new ones. And here's a list with a totally different uh, content. Um, these are difficult words that students identified. Once we've made some uh, changes, we can click on this button to reset the data back to where it was. Uh, we can also click on this one if we want to see this exactly as the students see it without any of these menus. 
So the menu is now in this box that we can move out of the way and we can now see how this looks if it takes the whole screen. We can also add several students here, just like before. There are also uh, many uh, frog activities that have built-in dashboards. So here's a, a chat, and we have two people. They're in the individual mode, so they can't chat with each other. That's a bit boring, so I'll put them together. And now they're chatting with each other. Uh, to see the dashboards that are available, we can click on Toggle Dashboard. And often there are multiple dashboards. So here there's a word cloud dashboard. And we see here how that's updating. So most of the dashboards update in uh, close to real time. Oftentimes it's also interesting to see how these dashboards look with a large number of students and it will be uh, tedious to open 20 student windows here and type a lot of text. So we also store um, log files anonymized from actual sessions or, uh, or test sessions and we can get there with the example logs dashboard. So here, for example, is the result of um, using the chat with about a hundred and some students. And in this case, we also have the whole history because we want to see not only how does a dashboard look at a certain point in time, but how is it actually developing. So this is the final stage, but we can replay at 32 times the speed to save time. And here we see how this dashboard changes as more and more um, text arrives. Now in this case, we see that it's very messy because it calculates the position of words randomly for every update. And that's something we want to improve. And so for us, this is not just a tool for teachers to see what the tools um, that are available, but also for developers so that when we have a new algorithm or we have a new way of visualizing this, we can replay it with the same data to see if it is actually better or not. So I'll turn that off. Another thing we can do is um, we can look at the log file. So uh, for example, here we have a, a simulation. Let's see. And uh, I'm going to take away one student. So we have a simulation where I will choose, I think the glass will heat up the fastest and I'm going to play and I will see if that's the case. And if I was doing some research on this, I would want to know what kind of log data is being captured right now by the system. So I can go and look at the log. And here we see that um, the only log file that this activity captures is actually activity did mount, which means when the students um, seed activity. If they're logging in late, this could be interesting. So that's not very helpful. Um, but we have another activity, uh, Thermocup, which um, looks a bit similar. This is um, a different way of um, looking at heating and cooling. So I'm now running this simulation. And if I go back to look at the log table, we see here AC Thermocup, um, not just activity did mount, but we see here select material changed, aluminum, select beverage temperature changed, click button run. And so we see that this particular activity is giving us very detailed information about how the students are interacting with it. And uh, this could be interesting if, if we're planning any kind of research um, program around this. Any um, information that's captured in the log file could also very easily feed into a dashboard, but this particular activity doesn't have a dashboard attached to it yet. Um, I'm just going to show one more example of a, uh, of a dashboard. So here's a fairly complex um, activity type called quiz. And we even have so many configuration options that we hi hid some of them behind this advanced configuration check mark because we can show questions one at a time um, so here we have example data. So let's say we have some rich text and media. All right, we can have uh, videos and images. 
uh, we can have um, a statistic quiz. And for that statistics quiz, we can decide to show questions one at a time, and that looks like this, and so on. Uh, so here we have different kinds of dashboards, and one interesting dashboard is a dashboard that's trying to predict when the students will finish with an activity. So here's an example of that, and we can. This is what it looks at like at the end. The blue line signifies progress, and the red line signifies completion. So how many percentage of the class have completely completed the activity? And if we replay this, we see here that the the stippled blue and red lines are actually the predictions that are dynamically updated to try to tell the teachers based on their current progress when we think that they will be finished so that the teacher can better plan his or her lesson. So I will close that. Um, a final feature which is more of interest to developers than to users, but if you click on underlying data here, you will actually see first of all the configuration. So this is exactly what you're seeing here, except in JSON format. You will see the activity data, which is the incoming data. Now in this case there is no incoming data, but in some of them there are examples of that. Uh, then you will see the currently reactive data. So this is actually the internal data structure, um, how it's storing or the choices that students make and so on. And then we have something called format product, which is uh, a way of adding context to this um, an internal data structure uh, to exchange with other um, tools. Now, if I uh, and if I go back here to a default config and I make a nice questionnaire about something, uh, so let's say it's about uh, capitals, and I will add uh, what is the capital of Norway, uh, Oslo, or say Bergen, or Trondheim, and you'll see that this is um, updating live as I type, so we can see right away what this would look like. If I am quite happy with what I've made and I actually want to reuse it, I can save it using this button in the activity library, so I'll call this a Norway capital quiz, and I can choose whether I want to make it public so anyone can use it or um, whether I want to keep it private. Now even if you make it public, other people will not be able to modify it they can make a copy of it in their own library. So I'll save this, and now if I go to the graph editor, I will be able to find this again. Also here, if I click on the library button, I'll see an overview of all the different activity that people have stored. So here, for example, I see the Norway Capital Quiz, and I have the option of deleting it because I own it. Um, these other ones I'm not allowed to uh, delete or modify, but I can here, for example, the Singapore Quiz. Let's see how, what that looks like. Um, well, very simple one. And now, if I wanted to, I could save it, but then I would save it, uh, save a copy of this under my own name. So that's um, the main functionality of the preview uh, mode. That idea is really to be able to explore um, all of the different activity types that we have uh, with different uh, configuration, different number of students, uh, social planes, and content and then hopefully get some good ideas about how these could be used uh, in an actual graph. Thank you.